Ah, Vancouver, one of my favorite cities in the whole world, and one that Ludwig tolerates. I tolerate it. Vancouver is frequently voted one of the most livable cities in the world. And I find Vancouver particularly unique because not only do you get to enjoy classic, thriving city life, but you're surrounded with so much stunning nature. Literally everywhere you look, there are mountains, forests, snow, water. It is just beautiful. Ludwig and I have visited Vancouver a number of times over the past several years, but when I had the opportunity to go again for a couple of days, I definitely leaped at this chance. This time I am all by myself again. <sighs> well hello there and welcome back to the channel. It's Solo Chloe once again and I know I know. I know what you're wondering. Now where the heck is Ludwig? This channel is called Chloe and Ludwig. Where is Ludwig? I want to see more of that funny little Swedish man. Don't worry. He is going to be in plenty of videos to come. But it just so happens that he is dog sitting back in Nelson this weekend and couldn't join me here in Vancouver. <laughs> So, what am I doing in Vancouver, you ask? I'm actually meeting my mum, my dad, and my brother down in San Diego. We're going to a fun little, well, not so little, a giant conference there, which we do almost every single year, except for during the pandemic. So instead of just flying there from Nelson to San Diego, I decided to make yet another little trip out of it. This seems to be a reoccurring theme in my life and on this channel, I know. I had originally booked a flight from Nelson to Vancouver, but the weekend I had booked my flight, it just happened to be snowing like crazy, which is great for all those snowboarders and skiers in Nelson, but not so great for those wanting to fly out of Nelson. The Castle Gar Airport, which is the airport we fly out of, is uh, known as Cancel Gar, as I so gratefully learned when I was first trying to get to Ludwig. Do you remember that? When my plane hovered over Castle Gar and then turned around and went back to Vancouver. Yes, fun times, fun times. Long story short, I ended up canceling my flight and instead booked a bus called Mountain Mike's Bus. Now this bus is awesome. I think it takes you from Caslo all the way to Vancouver and vice versa on select days of the week. This is a great option if you're looking to save a bit of money. It's less than half of the cost of flying to and from Vancouver from that sort of area of Canada. I'll pop a link down below if you're interested in that. It's a great way to get around and a solid bag up if flying might not be an option. So I spent 10 hours on this lovely little bus ride stopping at all sorts of nice little gas stations in the middle of nowhere. I was very excited to see a Tim Hortons along the way to get my everything bagel with cream cheese and then eventually I made it here to Vancouver. <sighs> P.S. Have you seen this cute little soft toy that they've left on my bed? I wonder if I get to take this home. Maybe? It says $40. Maybe not. So for the next three days by myself, I'm going to be exploring Vancouver. I won't be doing anything too crazy and extravagant while here, but just spending three days living it up by myself in the city. Maybe you'll get a couple of ideas yourself if you do decide to come here to Vancouver in the future. And you're probably also wondering, well, you just said you're going to San Diego, so now you're in Vancouver, so how are you getting to San Diego? Well, my friends, you know how much I love train rides. I have booked an Amtrak journey, taking me from Vancouver all the way down to San Diego. It's going to be a long one. And uh, that is probably another large reason why Ludwig didn't come on this trip is because I've already booked him on a couple of train rides with me this year and I've really got to decide which are the most important to force him on with me. This one he luckily got out of, but next time he'll be on the next train with me. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. After a hefty 10 hour bus ride, I was feeling pretty tired. So on my first night here, after arriving fairly late in the evening, I opted for a simple budget friendly hotel that actually turned out to be really nice. I stayed at the Victorian Hotel in downtown Vancouver. They say for value conscious travelers, they offer what's called a Euro room, complete with a queen size bed, beautiful exposed brick, an in-room sink, cozy bath towels, hair dryer, large mirror, and plush bathrobe, it honestly does give off luxury vibes. Oh, and I forgot the most important thing, a capsule coffee machine. You'll share three immaculate bathrooms on each floor that have all of the necessities you could think of. And all of this cost me just $250 New Zealand for one night. This was honestly a bargain compared to all of the other hotels I could find in downtown Vancouver. It had great ratings and I can highly recommend this place for a really nice and affordable stay. Well, in 
true Vancouver style, it is indeed raining. And it's raining the whole time I'm here, according to my weather app. So, here we are. Luckily the rain didn't put me off taking a stroll around this beautiful city. I started off with a wander around the seawall, which is actually the world's largest uninterrupted waterfront path at 28 kilometers long. Here you'll pass walkers, joggers, cyclists and skaters, and lots of cute little dogs. I then made my way over to Vancouver's most historic neighborhood, Gastown. With its cobblestone walkways and historic brick buildings, this place exudes old world charm, and it actually dates back to 1867. Ludwig and I love to come to this stunning little area for a great coffee, something to eat, or just to wander the streets. You'll also find really good shopping, and of course you'll get to see the famous Gastown Steam Clock. Built in 1977, this well-known antique style clock is powered by steam and whistles to tell you the time. It sounds every 15 minutes and marks each hour with little whistling symphonies. After a massive walk around the city, it was now time to check in to my next hotel of this trip. For my remaining few nights here, I decided to upgrade to something a little bit more luxurious. Welcome to the Paradox Hotel, also located in downtown Vancouver. My hotel room was absolutely stunning and it looked even better than in the pictures. I was quite shocked at how cool this place was. It had floor to ceiling windows with incredible views of the city, European oak hardwood floors, very fancy, a massive king size bed, workspace, cute little seating area by the window as you saw me at before, fully stocked mini bar, a bathroom that was definitely giving the main room a run for its money. It had Italian marble with heated flooring. Oh yep, this is luxury. It's luxury. A walk-in rainfall shower, beautiful lighting, and floor-to-ceiling windows. Don't worry, there were definitely privacy drapes and curtains. And everything in this room seemed to be controlled by these little touch pads. So high tech. There was also an iPad for me to use, just to take with me wherever I want. I've never seen that before. Oh, and best of all, I had a bathrobe and slippers and an espresso coffee machine. But that's not all. Let's show you outside the room. And yes, I'm taking you to look at the hotel gym because of course I came here every day. This fitness facility was on point. It had everything I needed. Tons of cardio, weights, and it had a flex room, which uh, I thought meant stretching or something. And then when I looked inside, there were mirrors everywhere. And I kind of got the joke, unless I think that was a joke. They had a stunning spa, a lovely lounge lobby area, a cozy yet very trendy bar that had a DJ playing most of the time I walked past, and they also had an interesting indoor pool zone that seemed to be inside a nightclub, as well as an outdoor hot tub. Wow, this hotel, it was fancy. Okay, so I've checked into one very surprisingly and extremely fancy hotel room with a view that I cannot quite believe. I've got my backpack on, I've got my walking around the city, comfy clothes on, and I'm ready to go and explore. So, here we go. <laughs> Well, the sun has definitely decided to come out. I'm very happy about that because it was forecast. Shh. Thank you. It was forecast to be raining this entire time that I was here, which I was pretty sad about, but luckily the sun has come out and because I like to walk everywhere I go, it's very helpful for me. I've just wandered from my hotel down to the waterfront. As you can see, it's absolutely stunning on a day like this. Shush, shush, shh. I'm about to take the little cute ferry across the water and over to the famous Granville Island. Now, Ludwig and I always go here when we come to Vancouver. It is a stunning little market, mainly food I've noticed. Amazing coffee. Here we go, Granville Island. It's time for probably a lot of eating food today. The ferry over to Granville Island cost $3.75 one way for an adult or $6.50 return. There are also a bunch of different places you can visit. I simply paid with my card on the ferry, but you can also pay with cash or online using this QR code. The views along the way are absolutely stunning and the whole trip felt like it took less than five minutes.
Located in the heart of Granville Island, you'll find the Granville Island Public Market, one of Vancouver's most popular tourist attractions. It's the famous place to buy fruit, vegetables, and a range of other market goods. You could spend a good few hours here walking around, grabbing multiple bites to eat, drinking coffee, listening to live music, and just admiring beautiful views of the city. Whilst here, you can also wander over to the famous silos. There are six concrete towers, each 70 feet tall, and they were revamped by talented Brazilian street artists and have now become one of the most photographed spots in Vancouver. goodness I forgot how much I love this place okay so my little plan of action here in Granville Market get a coffee wander around the whole market while I sip my coffee and try to narrow it down to a handful of things that I actually feel like eating unfortunately I forgot how incredible all the food is here and I cannot narrow it down to something acceptable for lunch German sausage I always go for one of these if I find that there's a plant-based option I'm obsessed with German sausages Second option, I saw that there was like a bread company that offers world famous grilled cheese sandwich. I think I actually had that a couple of years ago back when me and Ludwig were here. Another option is I saw a wild salmon chowder. Yes please, and if I'm gonna get salmon, I think it's best to do here in Granville Island or in Vancouver as a whole. I know they have some of the freshest seafood around. And as I was walking past the donut shop, I heard a lady saying, if you're gonna get a donut, this is the place to get it. It has amazing donuts. I went over, I had a look at the shop, and indeed it has a massive line, even curving around the outside and going outside of the building. So if that line is any indication on how good those donuts are, if I have to, I have to, I guess. The first point of call was German sausage. Went with a lovely Beyond Meat sausage and got all the trimmings, sauerkraut, mustard, ketchup, relish, and onions. And I was delighted to see a little side of potato crisps. I've got a two hour massage booking coming up in like three hours. So I'm gonna try not to eat too, too much, even though that's not gonna happen at all. But you know when you go into a massage and you've just had like a gigantic meal and then your tummy's like going I don't want that to happen because that always happens to me. Without fail, I always have this gigantic coffee or a big huge meal and then go into a massage and my tummy's going crazy. So I think I'm giving myself enough time before the massage. Anyway, the sausage is getting cold. Absolutely delicious. You just can't go wrong with sausage and a bread. If you watched our Danish food tour video, the hot dog part was probably my favorite part in that whole video. Sausage and bread. What can I say? It's good no matter where you go. Okay, I am currently trying to find the chowder place and I'm getting a little bit lost. Definitely underestimate how big this place is. Wild salmon chowder. Where are you? I found it. I am so glad I went for this wild salmon chowder. It was rich, hearty, packed with onions and potatoes, and honestly was the perfect thing for a cold but sunny day in Vancouver. I can highly recommend this meal. Okay, I've got my grilled cheese. This is my third and potentially my last little bit to eat, depending on how full I feel after this. Watch this space. So this is apparently world famous grilled cheese. Ooh, when it's so oily and hot, it's like seeping through the paper. Look how melty that is. And it's so crunchy and so good. Wow. I didn't even actually read what was going on in here, but it said something about apple wood. I don't know about the best grilled cheese I've ever had, but pretty darn good. Hmm. 
So dotted all over the place, there are these little picnic booth sort of tables. Even though it is a really crowded day, it's a Monday. It's very crowded, probably because it's a nice day. There is ample seating. Here I go with the word ample again. So much seating, indoors and outdoors, but on a day like this, it is really nice to take it outside. You've got an incredible view. I do love how they've got different musicians plotted around the place. So you've got a really nice vibe in the background. <sighs> Highly recommend coming here. Oh my goodness, as it gets into the middle, it's like so oily and cheesy. <laughs> I'm definitely in the mood for something sweet after this though. It's just that the donut line is continuing to get longer and longer and longer as the day goes on. I didn't think it could get longer, but it continues to grow. Okay, half an hour later and this line has exploded. I think it's official. I have to have one of these donuts. what all the fuss is about it's really crispy and delicious and crunchy on the outside and so soft and almost like moist on the inside this is absolutely delicious that lime i'm gonna say it was worth the wait holy moly this gave me such a fright after a long, hefty day of eating all the food at Granville Island, I felt like I deserved a massage. I don't often get massages in everyday life, so when I'm on holiday, I really like to splurge on this. I found a place online called Barefoot Oasis. It was within walking distance from my hotel, it had great reviews, and they seemed to have a really good deal online where I could get a one hour foot reflexology massage and a one hour deep tissue massage for a discounted price. I've never had a foot massage before, so I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Very Two hour massage later and I can highly, highly, highly recommend that you come to this place. I have no words. I don't know why buildings are so beautiful. But you can see the mountains and the big bridge in the distance there. More mountains over there. Vancouver is just so beautiful. Well, I was gonna go out and walk to Chipotle, but it's like, I don't even have my watch. It's like 8.30 almost. It's getting a little late and I noticed I have an in-room dining menu. Looks quite fancy. I'm a little nervous to look at the prices because I feel like it's gonna be pricey. Well, this is definitely the fanciest room service I have ever received. The lady literally rolled in this entire table and like served it out here in front of me. I've never had this before. This is, tr this is, this is a luxury hotel, guys, isn't it? This is a real luxury hotel. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna roll this little table up to the bed and sit here and watch Mary Poppins Returns because that's coming on in like 20 minutes. All right, here we go. two glasses, not one, but two glasses of ice cold water. These hand cut chips are so thick. Mmm, and they're so garlicky and truffly. Oh my gosh. Wow, wow, wow. Mm. Yeah. What is life right now? I feel like I'm doing cooler and cooler stuff as the days go on. I am so, ah, I love it, I love it. Oh, 
All right, well, you know how I told you that I had originally come to Vancouver to catch a special journey from Vancouver down to San Diego. That's no longer happening. I was gonna be riding on the Amtrak Coast Starlight, which I was super excited about. It takes you from Seattle all the way down the coast, and I was gonna hop off in Los Angeles and then catch another bus down to San Diego, which is where I'll be meeting my family. However, yesterday I had a little automated voice message on my phone and an email telling me that this was canceled. I'm really upset, but it is due to mudslides and severe weather, so there's nothing they can do about that, unfortunately. Luckily, I'm getting a full refund, which is great. However, it's just really upsetting because this is the second time I've had a really fun adventure planned with Amtrak that's been cancelled. I'm beginning to wonder if I should keep trying to book an Amtrak train or not. I probably will because I really, really want to try a train in the US. I've never done it before, although I've only done a few trains in my whole entire life, like two, but still. Anyway, I look at the bright side, I want to look into a positive direction. I've got a couple of extra days in Vancouver, I can't complain at all. And I took to Instagram, I asked you guys what on earth I should be doing for my last few days here, and you guys gave me a whole bunch of fun suggestions, so thank you for that. I'm going to go and try and do them all. Starting off with apparently the best coffee in Vancouver, followed by another cool cafe that I personally want to go to that no one told me to go to but I want to go here for a certain reason and you'll see why followed by the best lunch ever apparently I'm gonna be waiting in a line to get there it's really good ramen and then I'm gonna hire a bike I'm gonna bike around the seawall and we'll see what else I have time for let's go first up breakfast I started off my morning by heading just outside my hotel. After asking the team at the front desk, they referred me to a really popular coffee and donut spot here called 49th Cafe. I'm not usually one to eat donuts all that often, so having a donut two days in a row felt extra rebellious. I decided to try something different this time around, and instead of reaching for my usual plain flavor, I opted for a donut that sounded very unique. An Earl Grey donut. The verdict? It was uh, very Earl Grey-y. My mum would have loved it. Me? Not so much, but I still ate it. It was something new, and I like trying new things. Next on the list, I was off to taste, apparently, the best ramen in the city. A friend told me about this place called Ramen Dambo. She lived in Vancouver and said, you'll definitely want to be prepared to line up it's that good. And I love getting a local's recommendation, so I wasted no time in walking over, and to my surprise, it was barely a line today. This definitely changed as my lunch went on, however. The first thing I have to mention is how cute is this little baggage storage stool combo. It was a perfect fit for my big backpack. The menu was incredibly simple. You just tick your preferences and then hand it to the waitress. I opted for the vegan ramen. I must say, going from cold outside to hot inside had my nose running like crazy. Don't mind me. I was pretty shocked at how fast my food came out. It literally felt like less than five minutes. My starter was the veggie goiza. Gyoza? Goiza? I'm never sure how to pronounce this. But they were absolutely delicious and piping hot. And the ramen, wow, what a pretty looking meal. And a fantastic portion size. The broth was so incredibly tasty, great noodle to liquid ratio, but I saw if you ran out of the broth, you could get a top up if you wanted. The toppings were delicious, and I think what I like most about ramen is that it always takes quite a while to eat, making you work for every single bite rather than rushing through it. This was honestly the perfect meal to indulge in on a chilly Vancouver day. This whole meal came to just $20, including a tip. Wow, that has got to be one of the best value lunches out there. I can highly, highly recommend. <sighs> the sun came out for just a second and I decided to go out of the house with no big jacket on. That was a bad decision. Tough to get a coffee at a local's recommendation as best coffee in Vancouver followed by quick pit stop back at the hotel to get my big cozy jacket. Brrr. Keep on underestimating how much I feel the cold weather. My next task of the day was to taste Vancouver's best coffee, according to a local. And with a big day ahead of me, I thought a caffeine hit was definitely going to come in handy. I was off to find Matchstick Coffee. There were a few different locations around, and I noticed that one was close to my next activity, so off to Davy Village I go. 
So here it is, matchstick coffee. It was bright and cozy, beautiful lighting, there was lots of different food to order, muffins and pastries, and I went for an oat milk latte. It was super creamy, just the right temperature, the coffee to milk ratio was on point, yum. And I can safely say you should buy a coffee here. So the next very important thing I had to tick off while on this trip in Vancouver was luckily just around the corner from Vancouver's best coffee. Located in Davy Village, a vibrant and thriving gay community home to the frequently photographed Rainbow Crossing, you'll find boutiques, bookstores, coffee shops during the day, and busy street life at night with many pubs, clubs, and bars. I was to track down the most extravagant Caesar in the city. Now, if you have no idea what a Caesar is, it's considered Canada's national cocktail. When I first heard about this interesting drink, my initial thoughts were gross. But after a couple of sips, you realize, hey, it's like an unexpectedly tasty, cold, alcoholic tomato soup. The key ingredients in this little gem are vodka, clam juice, tomato juice, spices, and wish just, wish just, wish, work it, ah, which is to say, which is to show, I cannot say this, I'm just gonna put it up on the screen, this sauce here. Let me know down below, can you say this word? Worcestershire sauce. It is typically served in a highball glass, rimmed with celery salt and garnished with celery stalk, olives and lime. Although, you'll notice that every place you go puts their own little spin on it. I've seen all sorts of ingredients thrown into the mix, but apparently there was one place in particular that does things a little bit differently. Basically taking it from a drink to a full meal. Welcome to Score on Davy, a popular neighborhood pub that specializes in very unique Caesars. I grab a little booth of my own and take a glance at the Caesar menu. I was shocked to see just how extravagant some of these Caesars are. And just when I got excited to order the craziest one I could see, I read that you actually must share one of these larger ones with a party of at least two people. And I guess that makes sense. So I perused through some of the smaller options. There were so many to choose from, but I landed on the mac and cheese -er deep fried mac and cheese balls, pickle and onion rings. It was quite daunting to tackle actually. I can't imagine how I would get on with one of those huge Caesars. I have to admit, the toppings tasted pretty average. What you'd expect from a bunch of deep fried treats and eating them on the skewer was uh, rather difficult. They did offer plates and cutlery, but I thought it would be more authentic to eat it as served. Caesar was delicious, however, and uh, pretty strong. I feel like I unintentionally said yes to a double. I'm still pretty keen to bring Ludwig here so we can order the giant Caesar next time. Well, at this point, this little time away in Vancouver is starting to seem a little bit more like a food tour. I'm not apologizing for that one bit. Right now, everything smells like barbecue sauce and mac and cheese, and that's because I was trying as best I could to not remove the toppings from my Caesar, therefore my hair was dipping in every single crevice of the food. And now, it's all I can smell. But, that was great. And I am definitely a little bit tipsy. We've visited Vancouver a number of times over the past several years, and we still enjoy coming back whenever we can. In our last few visits, we ticked off one of the most popular things to do here, the Capilano Suspension Bridge Park. I can highly recommend coming here at least once for an absolutely beautiful walk, great photo opportunities, and perhaps for some, a test for your fear of heights. Down. You think the bridge will hold a bit? No, 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 don't do that. Don't do it. There you go. <laughs> Having already done this twice, however, I thought I'd skip it this time around and instead try something different, like going to hang out with some cats. Okay, back to the hotel. Warm jacket. Check. Now I am ready to go to the cat cafe, or shall I say cat fay, and then perhaps a little bike ride.
along the seawall. But first, I heard that this city is home to the world's narrowest commercial building. And uh, if you've been with us for long, you may notice I have a slight obsession with small things. For example, we stayed in the world's smallest hotel and cafe in Denmark. The doorway to the shower is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Look at this little hole. You basically just have to slide through here. There's a little window in the shower. This is so, 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 so. So cool. And I even slept in a seven square meter capsule hotel at Gatwick Airport. So with my obsession of small things in mind, I wandered over to Chinatown where this mysterious building was located. This here is the Sam Key Building, located at 8 West Pender Street in Vancouver. It was constructed in 1913, and according to the Guinness Book of Records, it is the shallowest commercial building in the world. How cute is it? It takes just a couple of minutes to admire this strange little structure, but if you have an appreciation for unusual architecture, I definitely say come and take a look. Especially if you're out and about in Chinatown, plus it's on the way to one of Vancouver's top attractions. Sun Yat-sen Classical Chinese Gardens. The website says this place is a registered museum and a unique venue for cultural programming and events including guided tours, concerts, festivals, exhibitions, receptions and educational programs. I've been here a few times and it's a really tranquil and peaceful retreat away from the city streets. This small intimate garden features beautiful pavilions, winding shaded walkways, a jade green pond with koi fish, a collection of 150 year old miniature trees and best of all, it's free entry. I was really missing my little cat back at home in New Zealand, so I took to Google to see if there was a cat cafe here in the city. And right on the outskirts of Chinatown, there was Cat Fay, offering up cat pacinos and cat themed treats in the company of adoptable rescue cats. It was $16.75 for a 55 minute visit, and I also threw in an Americano. Because why not? It's only my third coffee of the day. They do actually recommend booking online as walk-ins might not always be possible during busy times. I can see them all. Hi, Cosmos. When you walk in, you're asked to wash your hands before interacting with the cats, and it's a pretty large space with plenty of seats and tables to choose from. Cat Vey have partnered with various animal rescues to help adoptable rescue cats from all over Canada find loving homes. They have around 20 to 25 cats here at any one time, and with lots of kitties being adopted, more and more newbies are arriving every week. You can actually take a look at their website and meet the cats before you come in if you're interested in adopting one. cat lover, you should definitely pop this on your list for a fun little stop during your stay in Vancouver. One of the best times of year to visit Vancouver is undoubtedly spring, to witness the stunning cherry blossom trees dotted around the city. Each spring, as the rainy season fades, Vancouverites are greeted with 40,000 cherry blossoms. We were very lucky to witness this as we were here in spring one year. Absolutely stunning. If you can book your trip for spring, it's a great time of year to visit Vancouver.
I know I look amazing right now. I've just hired a bike from a place called Bikes and Blades. And this bike right here, plus this lovely nifty helmet, was only $7 for one hour. So I'm taking this guy around Stanley Park, around the seawall for the next hour. $7, you can't really go wrong. What a beautiful day to do it as well. Right, well, this was fun, and actually, it goes so fast. It's been almost an hour, 50 minutes, and I've spent most of the time actually hopping on and off the bike, trying to get these shots for you. If you come to Vancouver, 100%, hire a bike, go around the seawall. You can hire the bike for all sorts of different time frames. I just chose one hour because it's getting quite late and I need to get back to my hotel. I've got a pretty early flight in the morning. Can I recommend doing this? 150%. This is probably one of my favorite things I've done as well as the Capilano suspension bridge, which I did last time with Ludwig. 100% definitely do this. It's a lot, a lot of fun. <laughs> my solo video in Vancouver. Maybe you got one or two, maybe six ideas on what you can do when you're in Vancouver, whether by yourself, with your friend, or your family. Let me know down below, have you done any of these activities yourself? I know you especially want to try that bike ride around Stanley Park. So, don't forget to like. And subscribe. And stay tuned for the next video. Stay. Oh. <laughs> Good job. Mom. All right. Now I'm in San Diego. Oop. Now I'm in San Diego with these guys. That guy. Mama. And dad. <laughs> Woo! Let's go. Power walk time.